The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome. What is going to be one of our best episodes of Double Tap TV yet this season. Hi guys, thank you for being along for the ride. Our email address, feedback at ami.ca is our email address. Please send along any questions, comments. I think you're gonna have a lot after this week's program. If you wanna get out on Twitter, you can do so as well. It is at Double Tap Canada, and our hashtag there is Ask Double Tap. I am Mark Aflalo, alongside me every single week is Stephen Scott, live from Glasgow, Scotland. Stephen, am I setting us up for failure here, or is this really <laughs> one of those episodes where I think people are are going to be astonishingly amazed and they'll walk away going that was great yeah i think this is the one you know we, we so we like to build it up a little bit here at the start of double tap tv but no i think this week you are quite right to be excited mark this is going to be a good one this week if you're a fan of the fruit company then you're going to love this one i think there's no doubt in anybody's mind if they pay attention to this show Maybe they have to have had tuned in to maybe a couple editions of this show, or maybe they've listened to Double Tap Canada on AMI-audio, which happens every uh, Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. No, uh, no plug there intended. Um, they know that you're a big fan of Apple. And Apple has had... It's amazing. If you think about this year, this year has had so many ups and downs. I think for most people, it's been a pretty depressing year. But when it comes to things to look forward to and things to bring our spirits up and things to get excited about, Apple has really delivered this year. Yeah, who'd have thought that a major multinational company that's only intention really is to sell huge amounts of product would make us happy, Mark. Uh, yes, that is exactly what's going on here with Apple. And you know, as a fanboy, and I am a self-confessed fanboy, this for me is, is such an exciting time uh, for a lot of different reasons. I mean, I'm always interested in the accessibility of the products. You know, it's the, the first place I always go when we talk about the products. But this year, I've been just getting as equally excited as the nerds about the hardware, which this year really, I think, has excelled itself uh, in the delivery of some of their new products. Yeah, if we, if we flash back a little, we think about the various keynote events that happened this year, mostly digital. I mean, as of WWDC, when we saw the first introduction of iOS 14, that was the first time that Apple went all digital on an event like that. But earlier in the year, we saw the introduction of something new, LiDAR, on the iPad Pro 2020. That was an exciting addition, which we think has a lot of potential, and we're going to be talking about it this week. Then we saw the new iPhone, which of course included that LiDAR. We saw the most recent announcements are these brand new Apple Silicon Max, and, and you know, we've talked about this before, we've talked about this on uh, on Double Tap Canada, and as of, you know, talking to you guys right now, we have our hands on some of these new Macs, and we're putting them to the test, and honestly, Stephen, and I'm saying this not as an Apple fanboy, but just as a computer lover and an electronics lover, the things we are seeing come out of these machines and the capabilities are honestly blowing my mind. I am absolutely amazed. I, I'm not a guy who gets too bogged down in geek, geek bench scores, right? That doesn't really appeal to me all the time. I hear all these guys talk about, oh, well, the geek bench score in single core was this and multi core was that. And I think, yeah, <sighs> boring. But actually, this year, I've been getting equally excited about Geekbench scores. I'm like, look how fast this thing can go. And you know, all these YouTube videos of people piling on the pressure with it, loading up Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro, <laughs> making it go as fast as it can go, trying to break this thing. And you know, and, and, and I think the key thing is here, we're at generation one. This is the first generation of Apple's yeah. new processors. They are fast as hell, and they just they just beat everything else on the market. We probably shouldn't be too surprised, considering what we've seen with iPhone and iPad, but I don't think any of us were quite expecting this level of performance inside a desktop computer so soon. Honestly, Mark, I felt I'd fallen asleep in 2020 and woken up in 2040. It just Everything just seemed to change overnight. Well, that's one of the things, you know, the analysts talk about whenever Apple finishes a keynote or any kind of announcements, you know, they try to figure out, okay, why didn't they talk so deeply about the technology and the specs and the things that are going on there? And when you ask people at Apple, the answer is quite simply, it's not about how much RAM, how much hard drive space, what kind of processor is involved there, but how the program and how the software runs so well with that hardware. And sometimes that really does take center stage among, you know, all the processors and the bits and the bytes. You know, I, I use ourselves as an example. I, you know, towards the end of 2019, picked up the brand new 16-inch MacBook Pro, 
I went with an i9 processor, which was the highest end, a lot of RAM, and I, I had the best, greatest machine in my hands. And, and now we're seeing information that these brand new Macs with their Apple's own chips are absolutely blowing the pants off of my Mac. So, so lots of exciting things to come. And we're going to talk about all this stuff during this week's show because we've got an incredible guest lined up from Apple itself. So stick around. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Stephen, you're going to introduce us to your new friend over at Apple. It is Double Tap TV. Again, get involved. Feedback at AMI.ca. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. A very, very exciting episode, as I alluded to, off the beginning of the show. I am Marco Flalo. As always, joined by my side is Stephen Scott. Even though we're not really side by side, Stephen, you know, we can imagine that we are there together. Perhaps maybe we'll work on some green screen action down the road. Uh, we've got an amazing guest standing by, someone who you met last year at a conference. Stephen, remember when we were able to actually go out and actually attend these conferences? Ah, those were the days. Yeah, that's right, Mark. I'm here with Sarah Herlinger, Apple's Director of Global Accessibility Policy. Sarah, it is great to be with you again. Hi, so nice to be back with you. I think the last time we had a chance to uh, chat was in London a year or so ago. Yeah, it seems like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? That it does. 2020 has been uh, um, quite the year, so it's, it's very nice to be able to catch up with you again, even if it is in a virtual format this time around. Absolutely. And yes, 2020 hasn't been great for any of us, has it? But for Apple, it's been great. Brilliant new products coming. Lots of news around accessibility as well. We're seeing new iPhones in particular. When we think back to the beginning of the year, the new iPhone SE. Uh, the phone I often nickname Sarah, the blind iPhone, because it's such a great little phone for those who prefer Touch ID to Face ID. And then more recently, we've seen the new iPhone 12 range with the new mini form factor up to the larger Pro Max. I'm telling you this as if you don't know, of course. Of course you know. But what I really want to get into with you uh, is accessibility in 2020. So let's start with the new iPhone lineup then. What's new? Well, I think, you know, we have a, a great lineup for this year. Every year we try and bring out some amazing new um, features, both in terms of hardware and software to uh, give people really a wide variety of choices and, and allow people to kind of choose the, the right device that works for them. As you mentioned, we know that the SE is really beloved in the blind community um, for those who like its compact nature. And as you mentioned, um, those who appreciate Touch ID. Um, but then also with the 12 lineup, you know, there's so many choices there. I think the mini is going to be one that, you know, comparable to the SE in terms of being a, a smaller device. I think there will be people who will really appreciate that. We have a, a lot of people who are uh, real, you know, lovers of the of face ID in the blind community as well. So uh, for those who choose to go that route, um, the mini is a great option. But also, you know, the pro lineup with uh, the new LiDAR scanner and its potential in terms of some of our great new features like people detection. Um, I think there's some people who are going to be really big fans of, of the pro line too. I definitely want to talk about people detection with you a bit later, but I want to mention a feature that appeared earlier this year in iOS 14, and that is voiceover recognition. Now, for those who aren't aware of it, what is voice recognition? So, uh, voiceover recognition is a, a new addition to voiceover. You know, uh, as you may well know, one of our goals every year is not just to surprise and delight the general public, but to surprise and delight everybody who uses our products. And so, we we like to build in some fun new features to support uh, voiceover users and you know, different different users out there of all different types. And in this case, voiceover recognition is. Uh, really about using our industry leading on uh, device machine learning to help identify and recognize more things in your, or, you know, on your device. So there's sort of three elements to uh, voiceover recognition. The first of which is um, being able to do text recognition. So for 
anything that is in a, a photo or a, a, a PDF and such, being able to uh, now identify the text that's in there um, and doing that a little bit better. We've been doing a bit of that for a while, but kind of continuing to improve and, and really develop uh, the text recognition. Also being able to do image descriptions and doing these in more uh, human sounding ways. So, you know, previously we gave really valuable information around um, photos that would tell you things like um, dog ball pool. So you knew kind of what was there, but not really a whole lot of what was going on. And so the real goal with building in the new image descriptions and, and using that um, neural engine to be able to, you know, and a lot of, of machine learning, a lot of images that have gone through um, to build the models for these. But now it would come out as more of a um, dog jumping over pool to catch ball. Um, so turning it into a way that gives you a lot more context to what's going on rather than just telling you the elements of a, a photo itself. And then the last piece of it is screen recognition, which is really built about, you know, for augmenting uh, what a developer may De developer may or may not have done to make their app accessible. So it's really looking at um, automatically detecting a lot of the UI elements. So sliders, toggles, buttons. Um, you know, we always work with our developers to uh, help them to make their apps accessible and give them resources to do so. But we know sometimes there are developers who um, may miss something. Uh, may not really be familiar with all that they should be doing. And so our goal there was to say, okay, we're gonna keep working with you because you as the developer know what you want these elements to be better than we ever could in terms of the exact uh, description. But in lieu of that, we don't want to make it so that members of the blind community lose out on those great apps. And so this, just opens up so many more apps in the app store to being um, really usable by the blind community. You know, more, a little bit more like you would expect on a Mac than on iOS. So it's not going to be an absolute parallel of those things. They are different devices. We have more to come with Sarah Herlinger from Apple, so stick around. If you want to get involved again, it's feedback at ami.ca. And on Twitter, we are at DoubleTapCanada with that hashtag, which is AskDoubleTap. Back with Sarah in a moment. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott with you. And Stephen continues to be standing by with our special guest on this week's program from Apple HQ in Cupertino, California. That's right. I'm here with Sarah Herlinger from Apple. Earlier, we talked about people detection, Sarah. You mentioned this feature. It is a new feature found in Apple's new iPhone Pro lineup. It's also in the new iPad Pro 2020 range. Can you tell us how it works? So people detection um, is a really fantastic new feature. And, and I should start it off by saying we actually were working on people detection before our current 2020 environment. So this was a feature that came out of conversations with uh, a, a lot of our employees who are blind as they, you know, talked about of the, the, the you know, kind of holes that we still could fill in terms of voiceover areas where there's still things for us to go out there and really um, affect change. One of the problems that they talked about was um, being out in the world and not having the context of uh, where people were around them. And it could be as simple as I'm in line at the grocery store and I don't know whether the person in the checkout line has gone through yet, you know, have they moved? Or I'm trying to, you know, enter a stadium to go see a sporting event. Um, how do I know when the line, you know, really it, it, that was a big one that came up is how do I know when lines move forward? And so we started working on this feature to really solve those very everyday problems about commuting and shopping and just moving through space. And then along came 2020. And as we started to look at moving through space has changed a lot. And there are other ways that this could be beneficial in addition to 
those original ones. And so, um, you know, this was a feature that we knew was really, you know, a perfect marriage of hardware and software uh, for Apple. Now, there's lots of information online about the various accessibility features that exist in Apple products, but you're going further with some other features online, aren't you? You're, you're bringing more information to the blind community. Yeah, so we have recently updated our accessibility uh, site on apple.com as well, which is uh, apple.com slash accessibility. Um, and, you know, year over year, we're always trying to update the site with new information, but sometimes we do give it a, a full overhaul. And in this case, um, we did this really to kind of uh, make people more aware of the accessibility benefits available across the entire ecosystem. So kind of focusing this more on, for example, um, talking about voiceover, explaining what it is, but then also telling you all of the many products it's available on. So how do you know, uh, you know, which, which of the Apple products are you gonna be able to find this one feature? So you know that it's available to you across the ecosystem. And then for each of the sections, there's a little plus sign at the bottom of each of sort of what we refer to as a card. And if you tap on that, it'll flip the card to give you more information. So a lot more of the sort of how to's, um, you know, what would you do to set up uh, a specific feature? And then how do you go deeper and find out more information? So in the case of voiceover, giving you a single place that talks about, you know, what are the, uh, what are the braille commands? What are the braille displays we support? Um, how do you learn more about all of the different gestures that are available with voiceover? So kind of giving you a lot more um, to not just inform you about the product but or the feature, but also to really get you going and have you feel a comfort level with what you're with each of the individual features that we do. Now, Sarah, while I've got you, I have to ask you one more thing. Get it? One more thing? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm talking about the new lineup of Macs, of course, with the new M1 chip. Now, I have the new Mac Mini, which I'm absolutely in love with. The speed of these machines are amazing. Now, in regards to voiceover, I have a lot of questions for you on this, but my main question is, will Safari still give me the dreaded busy busy when I'm using it, or has that been consigned to the trash can for life? Um, I, I will have to check on that. Uh, I, I'm not sure specifically, um, but I know that, you know, certainly the M1 chip uh, is improving the, um, you know, the, the quality of, of, the, of how many things run and improve, improving the, um, the kind of productivity of it. So uh, I, I'm poking fun, really, I am. Uh, I guess the more serious question I have around voiceover is around Big Sur itself. Now, Big Sur, of course, the operating system that runs on Macs, the latest one, of course, uh, it was updated for Intel Macs. For those with the M1 chips, the brand new Macs, it has been completely rewritten from the ground up. So my question to you is, was VoiceOver rewritten from scratch too? And also, on that point, what about integration with iOS? Because we're now able to run iOS apps, those apps on our iPhones and on our iPads, on the Mac, just like on the phone as well. How does all that merge together? Yeah, well, I, I think there, um, well, let's see. First of all, in the, um, the did we build from the ground up? Um, I think for each, whenever we have something new that comes out, the team um, will focus on how do we make sure that we are building something that works as best as it possibly can on any new hardware. So. Um, while it may not be a full ground up, there's a lot of work that's done to try and support and make sure that we optimize for uh, whatever is that new hardware that's out there. Um, and, you know, I think with the, that now adding the M1 chip and that, that um, ability to run more iOS apps on uh, the Mac, um, you know, there's a lot of work that's been done to try and ensure that the experience works well with voiceover. Um, I will say that, you know, by running an iOS on a uh, app on a Mac, um, you may find things work, uh, you know, more, a little bit more like you would expect on a Mac than on iOS. So it's not going to be an absolute parallel of those things. They are different devices, but we have done the work to try and ensure that things 
um, will still be f fully functional and working, uh, working well on it. Just know that it is, you know, an iOS app on a Mac. Sarah Herlinger, Apple's Director of Global Accessibility Policy. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, Mark, we've learned so much today about the new features of Apple software, but also some important insight into the way that VoiceOver and other accessibility features work on these new Macs with M1 processors. Quite incredible. You know, Stephen, in my career, it's not often that you get an opportunity to sit down with someone who yields so much weight at a company like Apple in Cupertino, California. Sarah, you know, what a great conversation. And I know you've been her friend longer because you've known her since TechShare Pro last year. <laughs> but uh, let's call her a bestie for both of us now, will we? Yeah, you know, it's great having Sarah on. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing more from Sarah in the coming year, of course. We're always seeing developments in accessibility, which is great. Also really great to pin down Sarah there on specifics around how VoiceOver's developing. I think the most standout moment for me was when she said that VoiceOver was not rebuilt alongside the new Big Sur Mac OS operating system you know, for M1 chips. I think a lot of us would have thought that would have been rebuilt alongside it. It goes to show the, the power already in something like VoiceOver. Uh, of course, there are many other accessibility features. And as Sarah says, you know, there, all those features are now available uh, and you can learn about them at apple.com slash accessibility and watch those tutorial videos as well. So uh, really good to hear from Sarah and we hope to hear more from her soon. Guys, on behalf of Stephen Scott and Sarah Herlinger, thank you so much for being here on this week's edition of Double Tap TV. Again, if you want to get involved and you've got a comment on this week's show or any of our shows, do email us. It's feedback at ami.ca. And on Twitter, feel free to reach out at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Thank you guys for being here. We will speak to you next week on another edition of Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. Hosted by Marka Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Attar. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Content review, Zachary Flalo. Voiceover, Anna Vicino. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director production, Kara Nye. Director programming, Brian Perdue. VP content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2020, Accessible Media Inc.